Now that we've looked at the PN junction, let's go ahead and we'll look at the transistor. Now don't worry if you haven't seen a transistor before, we will talk through what a transistor is and why it is of use to us. Now the transistor that we're interested in in this course is called the MOSFET and that stands for Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. Now that's a bit of a mouthful but it's really quite straightforward and it'll become apparent why it's called this just in a, in a moment when we look at the structure of this device. Now before we get started looking at the MOSFET, let's have a look and see where the MOSFET sits in with the whole pantheon of transistors. So let's say for example we've got all of the transistors here. We can split them broadly into two types. The bipolar transistor, of which we're going to have an NPN type and a PNP type. Now we're not going to be covering the bipolar transistor in this course, but we will mention it now and again. Now the type of transistor we're interested in is the field effect transistor, and this can be split into two. It can be split into the IGFET and the JFET. Now JFET stands for Junction Field Effect Transistor, and this is going to have an N channel and a P channel. Again, we're not interested in this type, although we might mention it through the course. The type of transistor we are interested in is the IGFET, and that stands for Insulated Gate Field Effect Transistor. Now the most prevalent type of IGFET is going to be the MOSFET, and this is our Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. Now this can be split into two broad types, the Enhancement Mode and the Depletion Mode. The Enhancement Mode is going to have an N type and a P type, and the Depletion Mode is going to have an N type and a P type. So throughout the rest of this course we're really interested in this little section here and this is going to be our transistor type that we're going to talk about. Now don't worry if these names seem strange to you or confusing, it'll all become apparent whenever we start looking at the structure of a MOSFET transistor. So let's go ahead and we'll do that now. Let us start off by looking at an idealised representation of the MOSFET transistor. Now what we have here is a piece of silicon that has already been doped to make it P-type. So this whole region here is P-type. And we then introduced a region up here which is going to be N-type. And we also introduced another region here which is going to be N-type. So that means that you can see from this point to this point here we've got a little P-N junction. And again, from this point to this point here, we've got a little PN junction. Now the MOSFET gets the name MOS from the sandwich structure between a metal conducting layer here. So this is the metal layer, the M. And then we have an insulating layer. Now the insulating layer is made up of something called an oxide. So that's the large O. And the, we then have the semiconductor layer, which in this case is a P-type, and this is the semiconductor. And this is how we get the term metal oxide semiconductor. Now it's a three-terminal three terminal device. We can call one of these N-types the source. We can call the other N-type the drain. And we can call the third connection here, the gate. Now we call this the source because this is where the charge carriers come from, so it's the source of the charge carriers. Now in this instance here, this particular device has got a p-type substrate. Now the charge carriers in this case are going to be electrons. Now we'll talk about other devices uh, later on, but let's just cover this one for now. So the I, the route for the current flow should be down through the source, across this junction, and underneath here, across this junction and out through the drain. But at the moment, if we've got no voltage on this gate here, the current won't flow through here, because in effect what we're going to have is a reverse biased junction. So it doesn't matter how we change the source and drain voltage, whether we make the source any more positive 
or less positive than the, the drain, it's not going to matter because we're always going to hit a reverse bias junction, either this one here or this one here. And I've got it drawn out down below here in a kind of schematic format. So we're never going to be able to get a current flowing between the source and the drain because of these, in effect, back-to-back -back, uh, diodes. And that's the diode here. So how are we going to use this as an effective device? How are we going to get the current to flow? Well, we're going to use the field effect. So what is the field effect? Well, it's just simply the idea that if we have a positive voltage on one side of a device and a negative voltage or a low voltage on the other side of the device, we're going to have an electric field. And from simple electrical engineering, we have that like charges are going to repel, so a positive and a positive will repel, a negative and a negative will repel, but unlike charges will tend to attract, so a positive will attract a negative. So if we put a positive value up here, it's going to attract the electrons. Now, in order to say we've got a positive voltage, we say positive voltage, but positive with respect to what? We need another point here. So the point at the bottom here is called the bulk. So if we can draw the bulk in here. So this is another connection, if you like, a fourth connection on this device. And this is called the bulk. I'll just write it in here. Now, if the bulk connection is at a lower voltage than this gate connection, then we're going to have our electric field and we're going to attract electrons that are already in the material or electrons through the bulk up into this little region up here. There's not going to get any further than this because obviously there's an oxide layer which is an insulating layer. But these electrons are going to come up through here. So how's that going to affect this P-type material whenever we have electrons coming from the bottom up through? Well, let's have a look at this down here. So here's the P-type material, which we've seen in the previous video. We have our silicon atoms here, and with a plus four and the four valence electrons. And we have our boron atom here, which is a plus three. Now, if we were to make this gate voltage here progressively more positive with respect to the bulk, then what would happen is we would attract electrons up into this gate region. Or equivalently, you could say we would expel the holes from this region. So if we were to expel the holes here, then we could say that this hole here would say would jump into this position and this electron would jump into this position. So it would mean that if we were to draw this out, we could copy this here. Control X, Control V, copy that and paste it in here. So this electron here would now jump into this position here. Just take a copy of one of these. And what we would end up with here is a fixed negative ion. So we would end up with a layer of these fixed negative ions along this channel here. So in effect, what we've done is we've changed the conductivity of this device, of this uh, material. So the material is going to look uh, very, very conductive for electrons, that is, we're going to allow electrons to flow from this point here all the way through. So in effect, the material in here, we could say has become inverted. That is that the material here no longer looks P-type, it actually looks N-type. So in effect, this PN junction here and this PN junction here disappear, and we're able to f have electrons flowing from the source all the way along this gate region and out through the drain. And we do that by adjusting the voltage on this gate relative to the bulk. So this is the how our metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor works. We've got a metal, an oxide, 
and a semiconductor layer. When we apply a voltage from the gate to the bulk substrate, we get an electric field. This electric field then attracts the electrons, which changes the conductivity just below this layer, which allows the current to flow from one end of the device to the other end of the device. Now, I have to add in a little caveat here, and that this is a very idealised simplification of what's happening. If we were to go and, if you like, uh, peel away the layers of the onion, we would have more and more detail, and you would start getting into details about uh, Fermi levels and the uh, distributions of charge, and there would be a whole load of other possibly quantum mechanical effects there as well, if you want to go do it through it in minute detail. But that's not what we want to do here. We only want to go down, down so far, and we've already gone down really quite far into the detail here. But what we want to do from now on is take the understanding that we have and see if we can work our way back upwards and create uh, engineering devices, devices that we can actually use. So from now on, we'll finish up with our device physics and we'll go on and we'll actually look at some of the fabrication processes involved in creating these devices. And then after that, we'll build up the practicalities of the actual devices. So thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.